my guys. It is a, well, I don't know if it's going to be a frosty night tonight or not here in the collapse of global industrial civilization here in a <laughs> Bugs in a Jar Farm. It is a Monday night, October 3rd, 2022, and uh, I don't know, guys, I just about was not going to do a rant tonight, but uh, I just thought we would just throw together a little bit of a flotsam and jetsam rant tonight from the mainstream media because, uh, I don't know, my new favorite doomer, Antonio Guterres, uh, he has another dire warning. How many dire warnings can one Doomer UN chief have? Is it dire? I am quite sure it is dire. Yes, dire. I know it is, it's not, it is a dire assessment. Yes, UN chief says current climate change pledges are, quote, far too little and far too late. There you go. Too little, too late. We're done. Finally, Antonio Guterres admits what everyone knows, that this is no surprise to any one of us here. Far too little, too late. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres issued a dire assessment, a dire assessment Monday on the current world pledges to cut greenhouse gas emissions causing climate change, saying they were far too little and far too late to keep temperatures from rising above a critical threshold. Okay, this is also described as a grim warning. We have a dire assessment and a grim warning. It is dire and grim. Take it away, Antonio. Quote, the collective commitments of G20 governments are coming far too little and far too late. <coughs> the actions of the wealthiest developed and emerging economies simply do not add up. Yes. Taken together, current pledges and policies are shutting the door on our chances to limit global temperature rise to two degrees Celsius, let alone meet the one and a half degree goal. We are in a life or death struggle for our own safety today and our survival tomorrow. Thank you, Antonio. A September report by the UN and World Meteorological Society found that in order to keep global average rise to, quote, one and a half degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels, greenhouse gas emission reduction pledges need to be seven times higher. There you go. Said Guterres, there is no time for pointing fingers or twiddling thumbs. Have you ever seen the word twiddling followed by any other word in the English language other than thumbs? I guess you can only twiddle a thumb. You, you, a thumb can do something that no other body part, I don't think, can do. Twiddle. There is no time to twiddle thumbs. Thumb twiddling time is over. You heard it here from the United Nations. Thumb twiddling time is over. It is time for a game-changing quantum level comprom compromise, yes, between developed and emerging economies. The world cannot wait. Emissions are at an all-time high and rising. 
There you go. But uh, I guess uh, one group of people uh, who do not seem to uh, have any concern about the dire warning would be the noble savages. So, uh, what are the noble savages? You know, the those Native Americans. Uh, I love that term. The Native Americans, otherwise known as the original Asian invaders that have been living, you, you know, for uh, thousands, hundreds of thousands of years in balance and harmony with the planet. Uh, what is their opinion about all of this talk about getting off of fossil fuels? <clears throat> Noble savage tribes dependent on fossil fuel resources rip Biden administration for double standard. Noble savage tribes that rely on fossil fuel production across the nation, meaning our nation, reiterated their demand that the Biden administration allow them to develop their resources on their lands. Tribal leaders and energy experts, tribal leaders and energy experts criticized efforts to restrict oil gas, and coal production as those resources sustain thousands, as those resources, okay, oil, gas, and coal resources sustain thousands of Native Americans' way of life. There you go. This is uh, the noble savages being uh, living in harmony and balance with the planet, 100% dependent on developing oil, gas, and coal production. Yes. The Department of the Interior has repeatedly expressed support for boosting tribal sovereignty for indigenous tribes, but has also pursued a climate agenda limiting fossil fuel production on federal lands and waters. Okay, this is Daniel Cardenas, the national, <laughs> the, the chairman, I, guys, you, you can't make this up. He is the chairman of the National Tribal Energy Association, the, the noble savage Energy Association and a member of the Pitt River Tribe, quote, air, water, and energy, and you say fossil fuel energy, are so foundational to our economy. I believe in the right that all property owners have to develop what belongs to them in any way they want. That's why it is important to fight for, to make sure it does not get taken away, close quote. You, you know, honky and then, and, you know, this goes back. Once again, honky making a deal with the noble savages. Over and over again. And this is the latest example. We tell those, uh, those noble savages, guys, this is your land to do what you want to with it. So what do they want to do with it, of course, is what anybody else would want to do with it. It's the same thing I would be doing with it. Same thing you would be doing with it if you were sitting on a damn oil well. You want to drill for oil and gas and dig for coal. You want to make that moolah to preserve your cultural way of life, going back, you know, tens of thousands of years. So honky giveth. And now, that old honky Joe Biden wants to take away our right to destroy the planet. Yes, roughly 20% of the nation's total oil and natural gas reserves, 30% of domestic coal reserves west of the Mississippi River, 
and additional natural minerals. <coughs> There's a scary thought. Altogether worth about one and a half trillion dollars are on Native American lands. However, about 86% of indigenous land with energy and mineral resource potential remain undeveloped and just 3% of domestic oil production now comes from tribal land. Uh, this is Conrad Stewart. That's a real noble savage name. Conrad Stewart, the Director of Energy and Water for the Crow Nation of Montana, quote, resource tribes, uh, resource tribes, I, I love it, resource tribes, resource tribes depend on the development of their resources to create better tomorrows for our children. Yes, it was, it was basically a mandate in Indian policy to establish and develop our resources, close quote. The Crow Nation's coal and resource assets are worth an estimated $27 billion, likely making the Crow Nation of Noble Savages among the largest coal owners worldwide. Yes. Um. Last year, the Biden administration let the Department of Energy National Coal, Counsel Char Coal Council Charter lapse, effectively ending the 40-year-old coal production advisory panel which Stewart had served on. Uh, the administration has pursued emissions standards and restrictions targeting the coal industry which tribes like the Crow Nation are dependent on. I love this. Quote, a war on coal is a war on crow with a capital C. A war on coal is a war on noble savages. Yes. In addition, the Mandan, the Hidatsa, and Arakara nations, the Osage Nation, the Southern Ute Tribe, and the Navajo Nation are all among tribes nationwide that actively rely on oil and gas revenues to reach their budget. Yes. Um, Nation, MHA Nation Chairman Mark Fox said that it was his tribe's right to develop energy resources, quote, so our children and grandchildren for the next 100 years have somewhere to live. The nation has benefited tremendously uh, this is Ron Ness, president of the North Dakota Pet Petroleum Council. Quote, y y you know, the Indian nation, the Native America, whatever you want to call it, the nation has benefited tremendously from the oil and gas activity on reservations, primarily with employment. There you go. Uh, Good Lord, well this goes on and on, but I guess uh, looking at Chaco Canyon, Chaco Canyon, and I've been there, you know, one of these uh, noble savage, uh, Chaco Canyon, one of their big sacred religious sites and all of this, uh, I guess there are 50. 
53 uh, places. You know, they want to start the noble savages. I want to start uh, developing Chaco Canyon. Oh, here's the 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 Anupiats, what some of us call Eskimos. Um, you know, trying to open up the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge uh, to more drilling. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, anyway, good God, this goes on and on and on. Uh, but I think we get it now. Is there anybody at this point suffering any delusion of the myth of the noble savage? And, and, and guys, I know that you think that I am picking on uh, Native Americans, the original Asian. It's not true. I am picking on these little lefties who, who will sit here with a straight face and tell you that, that there is not one single uh, whatever they call these people uh, supporting oil and gas and coal development in Chaco Canyon for God's sake. But anyway, uh, while the, uh, how do I want to, oh, uh, no, I should probably reorder this. So that is what the noble savages have to say. But what are the teenagers, what do they have to say about this? Uh, how can teenagers, how can teenagers help protect the environment? What are some, this is particularly in Hoosier, Indiana. I guess in Indiana, oh, it's the Hoosier, anyway, I, what the hell does Hoosier mean? H-O-O-S-I-E-R. I have no clue what a Hoosier is. Is it a Hoosier? Is, I mean, you're Hoosier than what? You're Hoosie, and then you're Hoosier? Who's the Hoosiest? Anyway, uh, how can teenagers in Indiana help prevent huge environmental impacts? The short answer, the consensus among those currently involved in environmental protection issues is that collective what? The consensus among those currently involved in environmental protection issues is that getting yourself sterilized is far more effective than any other action. Huh. I'm joking. You will not see the word overpopulation, population, or anything. Yes. The consensus among those currently involved in, involved in environmental protection is that collective action is far more effective than individual actions, especially collective actions focused around issues currently within your high school. Yes. So you need to focus on specific Goals. All right. Specific goals. Specific goals. All right. At some point. Oh, and then we get the long answer. Uh, I don't know if I really want to. Okay. Here's the long answer. Looking at specific goals. How about recycling? This could involve setting up recycling programs. Mm. This could look like not only a bin for aluminum cans only, but also the recycling of gently used clothing and items. Yes. 
I, anyway, guys, I, I swear I remember a, uh, I remember even before I was a teenager, back at Fernbank Elementary School in uh, Atlanta, Georgia, back in the 1960s, that, uh, you know, we had these big recycling drives in Atlanta, Georgia, in the 1960s. And they're still peddling this crap today. But I do like uh, this, this one grid. Now, this isn't in Indiana. This is in England. This is in England. We have a new group of teenagers I guess mostly teenagers, just stop oil. Just stop oil. You know, this is kind of a play on just say no to drugs. You know, that Nancy Reagan, probably dating myself, if anybody still remembers Nancy Reagan, that we were going to solve the drug problem in this country, just say no to drugs. Well, just Stop oil. This is the newest uh, brainchild over there in England. Just stop oil. Yes. Activists stage sit-down protests on Waterloo Bridge. Activists have taken part in a second day of protest to demand the government end the cost of living and climate crisis by just stopping, just stopping new oil and gas. The Just Stop Oil group said that 250 of its supporters held marches through central London on Sunday where they disrupted traffic. Well, that's one way to stop oil, disrupt traffic. It'll stop oil immediately. In shopping districts, and tourist hubs before carrying out a sit-down protest on Waterloo Bridge. So anyway, guys, <laughs> grab the Thunberg. Move over. We are going to hear from uh, Louise. This is Louise. Uh, hi, I am Louise. So Louise is going to take a she has 60 seconds. You know, I used to end my uh, interviews with saying, if you had 60 seconds to send your message out to the world, what would your message be? Well, I guess this is actually 71 seconds that Louise took. Take it away, Louise, and give us your 60-second message. <laughs> to the world from the teenagers. I don't think she is a noble savage. She looks like a honky to me. But Greta Thunberg, you've been dethroned. I, I like this girl. You tell them, Louise, what's on your mind to just stop oil. I'm Louise, and if you're wondering what the f I'm doing, how about taking a moment to think what the is our government doing? Our government are meant to protect its people. And what are they doing? They're lifting the ban on fracking. They're licensing over 130 new fossil fuel projects when their own scientists from the United Nations are saying we don't have a livable future if we have any new fossil fuel projects. If you're angry about the cost of living crisis, the energy crisis, the climate crisis, these are all part of one crisis. They are born out of a system of rich people protecting the rich and everyone else paying the price with their lives. A third of Pakistan is already underwater. There was 40 degree heat in the UK. This is normal. If you're not scared, if you're not angry, then you need to wake the f*** up. If you're annoyed at what we're doing, if you're annoyed at this disruption, then be annoyed at the disruption the climate crisis is already causing. 33 million people in Pakistan already affected, already losing their homes. If you think this is not heading for us, then you are wrong. Please join us because the only way to stand up to this government and protect life on Earth is to just Stop oil. Just stop oil. Just stop it. Stop it. Just stop it. Would you?
you just stop it? You know, come on guys, just stop it! Just stop oil. You know, even the teenagers got it right. We are just going to stop oil. Planet saved. So I really don't know uh, how to uh, fit this last story in. Uh, this is a, a young lady. She looks like she's about 24 to me. And so she has a question. Do I need professional help? This, this little hottie wants to know, do I need professional help? Quote, I am paycheck to paycheck. I am paycheck to paycheck. I make $350,000 per year, but I have $88,000 in student loans, $170,000, $170,000 in, do you think she's getting ready to say a mortgage? $170,000 in car loans and a mortgage, I pay $4,500 per month on. Do I need professional help? <laughs> and you wonder, uh, just stop oil. The planet needs professional help. But anyway, guys, I could go on with this. Uh, get out there and seek professional help while you still can. My guys. There's a log. Do you need professional help. What was that? He said, Pop, I just need you to turn that heater back on. What did it, do you need to do you need the covers on like that? Did the little dog in the covers like that? Bye guys. <laughs>